While we're praying to God, God is praying to us. You see, my friends, God needs a partner. We're asking God to do things for us that certainly some of us can do for ourselves. Reminds me of the story of a little boy who was in the kitchen with his mother. And uh, his mother, while she was cooking, told the little boy to go into the pantry and get me some tomato peels. Well, the little boy was scared of the dog. And so when he went and opened the door, it was dark in there. And he said, Mama, I'm scared of the dog. It's dark in there. The mother, being facetious, said to the little boy, Well, don't be afraid of the dog. Jesus is in there. The little boy then turned to the pantry and stood in the doorway and said, Jesus, if you're in there, hand me the tomato peels. <laughs> there are some of us who have that same mentality. Things that we can do for ourselves, we're asking God to do. But I hear God saying, I need a partner. Oh yes, we we, we need to understand that while we're praying for God to do stuff, God is looking for us to work with him. Look at the condition of our city. Look at the condition of our community. I'm sure all of us and all of the churches represented in here, we've been praying for our city. We've been praying for God to save souls in Detroit. We've been praying for God to change conditions in our neighborhood. But I'm here to let you know that God is saying, I want to change. But I need a partner. I need somebody that's going to work with me. I need somebody that's going to go into the neighborhoods and into the communities. I don't get nobody talking to me. I need somebody that after you pray, after you called on me, after you fasted, after you have laid it before me, get up from your prayer and go into the heavens and the highways and compel me. I'm tired of what's going on in our city. I'm just sick and set up with it. I'm fed up with our city council. I'm fed up with our mayor. I'm fed up with those who are running our city in the ground. And excuse me, I, I, I guess there's some folk that got some friends on the city council, but I'm just fed up. I'm fed up with Joanne Watson. I'm fed up with Kwame Kenyatta. I'm fed up with these guys. But the only thing they want to do is preserve their power, preserve their seat, preserve their fear of Yes. 
find Moses, the leader of the Israeli people. And they are in a difficult situation. There are many elements to this story that I don't have time to go into, but I just want to shine a light on three points. Um, the first point you need to understand is in verse number three. Because in verse number three, God speaks to Moses and tells him that Pharaoh is going to say um, that the people of Israel is entangled in the land and the wilderness has shut them in. Uh, but you need to understand how they got there. They got there because of verse two. In verse number two, God tells them where to go. And he leads them into a place where they are entangled by the land. And the wilderness has shut them in. In other words, God is the one that put them there. And so my first point, brothers and sisters, and you can write this down if you want to. Sometimes God will lead you into a situation where you are entangled. In other words, where you are is God's fault. God is the one that puts you in that situation. And the reason why he puts you there is because he wants some glory out of your life. Uh, see, I ain't going to get too much help now. But let's go at somebody and tell them God wants some glory. I'm 
somebody else and say, I ain't gonna let nobody stop my word. That's why I don't let nobody talk about my preacher. I don't let nobody talk about my man of God. I don't let nobody, no, they gonna help me in this. I don't let nobody run my man of God down. That's the source of my word. Yeah. That's the source of my word. Let me close you, let me close you. Y'all sit down, y'all sit down. Uh, point number three, uh, don't be afraid of the impossible. I really want to preach this part right here. Y'all gonna have me preach. Uh, don't be afraid of the impossible. Please look at verse number 15. So I want you to close up your Bible. But you gotta look back at verse number 15. You, you, you gotta look at this. You gotta look at it. Because God tells Moses. You know, you know, say, say, get.
be God's partner. That's what God's looking for, Bishop. He's looking for a partner. If you want the glory, 